Uh, now turning to today's other top story, the Globe and Mail is reporting that conservative MP Michael Chong and his family were targeted by a Chinese diplomat working in Toronto. Chong, a former cabinet minister, now serves as the Tories' foreign affairs critic. Here, in some, here is some of the fallout from that in the House today. Take a listen. He's, his government has known that a Canadian MP had his family threatened because that MP voted for human rights in the House of Commons. He knew about that for two years. He did exactly nothing. As the reports were made public this morning, uh, we followed up immediately uh, with top officials uh, to get all the information on this file, on what happened, on who was informed and who was not informed, to make sure uh, that we are following up in an appropriate way. This is absolutely unacceptable, and it shouldn't have happened. In a statement posted to Twitter, Chong says, in part, the government did not inform me that a diplomat was targeting my family, nor did the government take any action to expel the diplomat responsible for orchestrating this intimidation campaign. What happened should be a wake-up call for the whole of government. The Conservatives are calling for the Chinese diplomat to be expelled. Let's bring in Conservative MP Michael Chong. Thanks for being here. This is a pretty disturbing story. So let's, start, let's try to get it from, from, the, from the start. You only heard about this when you read it in the Globe and Mail? That's right. When the Globe contacted me for comment about the story was the first I heard that there was a diplomat working out of the St. George Street Consulate by the name of Mr. Wei Zhao, who was tasked by the PRC's Ministry of State Security to target my family in order to put pressure on me and other MPs on the floor of the House of Commons in foreign policy debates. So do, do you have any detail? Because we, we, I asked the minister just now, we heard what happened in, in, in question period today, I asked the minister just now, he says this shouldn't have happened, he's asking CSIS to give you a briefing, make sure that this never happens again. Who knew? Well, clearly the government knew, and clearly the government did nothing. It's dumbfounding that the Trudeau government knew almost two years ago that a diplomat accredited by the Trudeau government was working out of the St. George Street Consulate in Toronto, actively targeting MPs, including myself, and their families to try to change the debate going on in the House of Commons on foreign policy. It's dumbfounding that the government knew and didn't take action to expel this diplomat. Uh, it's clear this person is a diplomat in name only, and they're only a diplomat because the government of Canada has accredited them as such. This individual is clearly a foreign intelligence operative who's clearly been tasked with interfering and intimidating intimidating Canadians in our public debates. Okay, so let me, I'll come to the why you, uh, but I want to know what, when, when you say threats to you personally, what, what have you heard? What kind of threats were there to you? And then you'll tell me to your family, which is in, who is in Hong Kong, your family's in Hong Kong now. So what kind of threats are we talking about here? Well, broadly speaking, the PRC has been known to use family of Canadians abroad as a leverage tactic against Canadians. This is not the first instance of where they have done this. They have long been pressuring Canadian citizens here, coercing them, in some cases, to go back home for more intensive interrogations in the People's Republic of China by threatening their family that is in the PRC. Uh, and so they, they've got a range of measures that they could employ to threaten family members abroad, everything from interrogation to all the way up to imprisonment. Uh, this has been going on for some time. The fact that they would target an MP to try to subvert the course of our democracy is really beyond the pale. Okay, but like, what did they want? You? I mean, presumably, they're, they're threatening your family because they want something from you. They wanted okay. me to change so, my so position. Like that was a position on what? Give me well, an example. So, for example, we had been debating uh, the PRC's genocide uh, in Xinjiang in early 2021. The the, that's right. Okay, so th yes. the, the PRC has yes. been committing a genocide against some 12 million Uyghur Muslims yes. who live in Xinjiang province in the western part of the People's Republic of China. These 12 million individuals have been subject to detention camps, forced labor, forced sterilization, and a whole range of genocidal activities yeah, that are and going the on. And called it a genocide. That's right. So yes. we have been debating this, it's been put to a vote. Um, the consulate, uh, in this individual at the consulate in Toronto was tasked by 
the PRC's Ministry of State Security to prevent further debate from taking place in the House of Commons by pressuring uh, MPs like myself and others from continuing to have these debates by threatening and targeting their family. But abroad. clearly, if you didn't know about it, you haven't been. Like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand here um, because this, there's a lack of logic here. You didn't know that they, there were any threats against you, so they, they had not succeeded in, in, in scaring you or your family members. You have not. No, you, first no, time you heard about this. The first time I heard about. When a journalist about, called you. No, the fr I always. I have always known, as have millions of Canadians from diaspora communities, that authoritarian states use yes. pressure on family yes. abroad to pressure Canadians here on Canadian soil. We've always known that. So out of an abundance of caution, I've not contacted my family in Hong Kong in the last several years. What I did not know was that there was a diplomat approved to work in Canada by the Trudeau government who was orchestrating these coercion operations out of the Toronto office. And that's what I didn't know. And when that information came to the attention of the Trudeau government almost two years ago, they should have taken immediate action to expel this diplomat. It crosses all sorts of lines that a diplomat would be engaged in that kind of work on Canadian soil. And what kind of threats to, to families of diaspora, of diaspora communities? You're not aware of what kind of threats they were telling your family, do, doing on your family? No, because of an abundance of caution, I've you, not contacted okay. them over the last so several years. What would years. you like the government to do now? I would like the government to declare this diplomat persona non grata and to expel him from Canada today. I think now that this information has been made public, the government has no other option but to expel this diplomat. It should happen in the next 24 hours. If the government of Canada does not expel this diplomat, we are, the government of Canada is basically telegraphing to the world that Canada is open for foreign interference operations here on Canadian soil through the diplomatic corps, and we cannot allow that to stand. CSIS, he, the minister says CSIS is going to give you a briefing. Um, you'll have more details on, on, on what they knew and would you ask the question, so why was I not told? Do you not think that you would deserve to, to be told? Yeah, and I don't think that's the fault of CSIS. CSIS is under the obligation under the Security of Information Act not to reveal that kind of information outside of the government of Canada. The individual and the office that can authorize the release of that information is the PMO, is the Prime Minister's office. And so my only conclusion is that the PMO didn't authorize CSIS to let me know that my family was being targeted by a diplomat based here in Canada. The PMO knew? You know that for sure? The PMO would certainly have been told about a diplomat okay. accredited by the government that was engaged in coercion operations here in Canada. The Minister of Foreign Affairs would certainly have been told, yeah. and the Minister of Public Safety as well. And so why no action was taken is dumbfounding. Michael Chong, puzzling story, disturbing story. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us.